You're listening to She's the Business Podcast. How do you know if the marketing activities that you're doing for your business are effective? Well, there's really three aspects to use in order to critically decide which activities are the most effective for you to have in your business and enable you to make the right choices so that you're not just spending lots of time wasting your day on what we would call the fancy fluff, as in it's fluffy, but it's not doing much for you. So stay tuned because I'm diving into this topic with you today. We're going to outline those three essential aspects that you need to be ticking off to say, yes, this is effective for my business. Coming right up in just a moment. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Osborne, and in my 23 years of business and marketing, I've built many brands to become multi-billion dollar companies. And just in the last 10 years, I've built two online businesses of my own from my dining room table with two little babies running around at my feet. I've made it my mission to inspire you to get out of your own way and become the successful business owner who's living the lifestyle you really desire without all the hustle. This is She's the Business podcast made by women for women. This is your weekly dose of motivation and inspiration. Welcome back to She's the Business podcast. Today, we are talking all about how to identify the most effective marketing strategies so that you stop wasting your time on fancy fluff. Now, I'm sure none of us want to feel like we're fluffing around in our business. However, that is what is happening so often because we're in this place right now in the world where there are so many options for your marketing. There's literally almost an unlimited list of different things that you can do to market your business. Should you do them all? Well, I don't think so. (laughs) And you probably would agree with me. I'm sure most people listening right now, if you've been in business anytime over the first year, you've probably got more than enough going on with your marketing or what feels like more than enough. And maybe you're yet to see the real results from that. So the question is, well, are you using the most effective strategies for your marketing? Or are you simply doing something because somebody out there told you that you should or they had a very convincing argument as to why posting on Instagram is the best way or why they are using TikTok and you got shiny object syndrome and jumped on the bandwagon and thought that you could create the same results. Now, there's nothing wrong with any of the marketing tactics that are out there. They all work. Every single one of them works for someone with some audience, but they don't all necessarily work as well for you. And so this is why it's so important to be able to choose selectively which strategies, which tactics you're going to use in your own business Um, so that you really are using the ones that are most effective for you and not the ones that are most effective for somebody else. The issues that we're seeing right now are so many people spending time on marketing activities that are non-leveraged and what I would call a scattergun approach. So each one is being looked at in isolation of the others. And so time and effort is going into one over here and one over there and one over there. And then not leveraging each other. They're not actually helping each other. They're not creating that inbound flow into your business. And today I'm going to talk to you about the three things that you need to look at to determine what are the most effective marketing strategies that you can be using in your business today. So the first thing that we have to look for is what is the role of this activity in your overall marketing machine. Now, I love to talk about your marketing as a machine or as a system because that's what it is. You're not marketing an entire business. You're marketing an offering, a service. So just think about it like this. You know, what we're not in our business is marketing an entire business brand and going, hey, just come along to my website and then figure out what I've got and if it might be relevant for you and choose something. You know, you're not Domino's Pizza. 
your business with an expertise in a certain area and a very defined offering, right? So when we're looking at your marketing system, it's not to market a whole business and to give people a smorgasbord. It is very specifically to bring people in who are the right fit for your offering and enable them to buy from you. So it is an effectively a system or a machine that's working in your business and it's working all the time because whatever you've already done and put out there is still having an effect for you today, which is really why marketing is something that shouldn't be ignored. You know, I do see that at times people get tempted to use referrals only and to think I don't need to do any marketing if I have referrals. Well, guess what? Referrals are actually a form of marketing and should be treated as a type of marketing strategy. There's a whole way to really use referrals very smartly so that the type of referrals you get through are the right ones that you don't need to convince to buy your stuff that are actually really exactly the right fit for it and would be ready to buy. So there is a whole strategy around referrals. That doesn't mean that you're not doing marketing. It means that you've chosen that as a strategy for you. The other thing I see people doing where they don't want to do marketing is thinking, well, I'll just dive straight into selling. I'll forget about the marketing journey. I'll just start off by selling straight away. And I'm sure if you've ever experienced any form of cold outreach where somebody's just trying to sell to you straight off the bat, then you know yourself how effective that is. How often do you say yes to somebody jumping into your inbox and saying, hey, you know, can we work together? And you're like, whoa, (laughs) it's sort of like someone knocking on your front door of your house and asking if they can jump into bed with you. And you're like, whoa, whoa, slow down. (laughs) I don't even know who you are. Like, whoa, backpedal, please. It's the same thing. So, you know, jumping over or attempting, we'll just say attempting to jump over the marketing system and the machine that you use for your marketing is very ineffective. It's really not ideal. You don't want to be doing that unless you've got all the time in the world and maybe a whole team of, you know, of people who you're quite happy to pay to do all that for you, which I don't know who is in that position really. So let's forget about that. Let's think, right, well, we need a marketing machine. Now, what sort of machine do we need? It doesn't need to be big and complex, but it does need to have specific roles in the machine, right? There's a bit where things come in, there's a bit where they get processed and there's a bit where they pop out the bottom. So we think about a machine like that. Maybe it's a bit like, you know, when you're juicing an orange for orange juice, you know, you put the whole orange in the top and it gets processed and then the juice comes out the end. Well, that's what we're looking to do for our marketing machine with our business, Um, except we're not mashing up your client, your leads. Um, (laughs) They are just coming on a journey. Um, So they're turning from strangers into clients. And, you know, when I'm working with my clients in Business Jam, you know, one of the things that I'm always saying to them is make it simple. It can be just a two-step process if you want it to be. Start with that. Start with the most direct. You can always add in more complexity. It's very easy to add. It's really hard to take away complexity once you've got it, though. So start with the something that is really simple. What is the most direct route? Now, there is going to be more than one step because, as I just said, you don't knock on someone's door and ask them to get into bed with you, like in the first few seconds, which is what some people are attempting to do when they cold message. You, you're going to be doing something first in order to attract the right sort of stranger that would be the type who would like to jump into bed with you. That means that we've got a role there. The first role is that initial reach to be able to pull out those ones who would be potentially interested in the right fit. So you're going to be doing some sort of activities that are reaching out into the world to new people, right? Then there is an activity in the middle, maybe one, maybe two, that might help them to put up their hand and say that they're interested in learning more or they're interested in having a call with you or they want to know more about something. There's many ways of doing that. These are called your lead generation activities. And then there's an activity at the bottom that would turn your lead into a client. And so when we're thinking about it in this format, this process that the customer is going to go on, aka your customer journey, then you're asking, well, what am I doing at each of these phases? 
am I doing something that's reaching new people? Am I doing something that's helping people who are now connected to raise their hand and turn into leads? And then what am I doing to help leads turn into clients? Now, it's really important that we have something at every one of those phases, because if you don't, then guess what? You've just got a great big hole in the machine and, and whatever's coming in at the top is going to drop through the hole and it's not going to make it to the end. So what is the role that this activity is playing? Do you have a strategy? That is how you're going to tell if it's going to be effective or not. If you're doing all of your activity in the middle section, in the creating leads, but you're not doing anything to reach out to new people, then the results of this is going to dry up really quickly. If you're doing everything on the front end and reaching out to new people and then nothing behind it and just expecting people to carry on the rest of the journey on their own, well, it's kind of like inviting someone to go to a new land with you and then leaving them there on the beach and letting them like, hey, yeah, just navigate your way through. You know, I'm sure you'll find it eventually. Well, you can tell that's not going to be very effective, right? How about you walk with them and show them the way to get there or give them a map at least, <laughs> some kind of navigation. So as you can see, that's why this part is really important. Understanding the role of an activity in your overall system is totally crucial to determining whether you are using effective marketing strategies or not. The second one that you need to consider is leverage, the leverageability of an activity. So by this, I mean, you know, how much value are you getting for your time that you're going to spend on doing it? Now, there's a huge difference here in some of the marketing activities that you can do. Some of them take an extraordinary amount of time. Other ones can be very quick. And is it in balance with you know, is the time and effort required to produce it in balance, as in you're getting that same level of value out of it at the end of the day? I, has it been leveraged? Now, what I love to do is assess activities based on how many times can I repurpose this? So if I'm going to spend an hour or two hours of my time creating a video, how many different ways can I use this video? And as an example, you might create something that is a short video, like under 90 seconds. So it could be used as a reel on Instagram or Facebook. You could use it as a story. You could put it on YouTube shorts. You could put it on TikTok. You could use it as an ad in Facebook and Instagram, um, probably on those other platforms as well. I know there's quite a few purposes there straight away. So you know, of course, that depends on how many of those platforms you are already on and whether that matters to you. There's no use counting something as like, well, I could do all these things with it if you actually aren't already doing those activities. It's, it's not worthwhile thinking about TikTok. If you don't have a TikTok profile and you're not planning to start one anytime soon, then, you know, clearly that's of limited value to you. So add up how many ways you can use it with your current setup, like what you've already decided you want to have in your machine, what platforms you've chosen to use. This is uh, the piece number one that we already spoke about. So what are the activities and at what point in the customer journey are they being used? And so when I'm creating this piece of content, how much can I leverage it? How many different ways can I leverage it so that it is very much worth my time in creating it? And it's, it's going to be giving me, obviously, a lot more return on investment. Now, that would be number three. So your return on investment is the third way that you figure out whether this is going to be an effective marketing strategy for you. Um, by return on investment, I mean, does it bring in actual paying clients? Now, that is the ultimate data point, right? Right. Um, a lot of people spend time thinking, wow, this one's going to give me lots of engagement or this is going to give me a lot of reach. Okay, so it's giving you reach or engagement, but what is that worth to you? How many of those turn into clients? And if you don't know, then it's kind of worthless. If it's just giving you reach, okay, it's giving you reach. But if that's not resulting in something further down the line, then it's really worthless. So Figure out what things are worth to you. Now, you can do this by using your data, right? You can figure it out by saying, right, well, I, on average, get X amount of reach per month. X amount of those 
go to my website, a number of those turn into leads and a number of those turn into clients. You need to be able to track and map and match your customer journey with numbers, with real data so that you can tell, well, is this going to have an impact or not? Now, if there is no correlation there, if you think, well, you know what, I could turn that one off and nothing else, nothing would happen. It wouldn't influence anything else in the machine. Then you know that that's just extra activity that you're doing right now that's having zero impact. Okay. If it does have an impact on the machine, as in if you stop doing an activity and everything else dries up or stops, then you know that that does have a return on investment for you. But we do need to be making sure that we're tracking through to an actual sale. Don't just track to what we call the vanity marketing metrics. Engagement means nothing if they're not engaged buyers. If they're not people that are going to engage and turn out to be a buyer, who cares if people are engaging with your posts? means nothing. Same with the reach. It means nothing if you're not reaching people who are going to come through and join you and buy from you. So we need to be taking those very initial data points that are right up the top of your funnel, taking them through and seeing, well, what does that turn into? How many of those engaged buyers are clicking on a link or a messaging and dropping into your DMs and asking questions and wanting to work with you? How many are taking the next step? If the answer is nothing, then you're creating a lovely audience of fans, but you're not actually reaching buyers. So therefore, it's not an effective marketing activity. And you can look at, well, what could I replace that with? Now, what is it I could do instead that would have an impact, that would have some reach? Now, the mistake I see a lot of people making is looking at something as an opportunity, thinking, wow, there's going to be a good leverage here or good return on investment with this activity, but they haven't really assessed it in terms of who's the audience that I'm reaching. For example, there might be a a local networking opportunity or an association that allows you to host an event or to give a talk or you know, promote your services in their group. Now, you might think, wow, that's great. I get to join this group and then I get to host an event or, you know, promote my services to the other members. The very first question that we should be asking is, who are the members and are they my ideal client? If there are some of your ideal client, but there's also a lot that are not, then we do need to start to figure out well, what is the real leverage of this activity? What type of return should I be expecting to see when I do this? And therefore, is it worth my time? Because yes, you can do it. There's a lot of things you can do and there's so many opportunities out there. But you really want to be thinking about which ones have the highest amount of leverage as in, you know, you're creating something for one purpose, one place, and it can be repurposed in other ways that will all help to bring in the clients and leads. And you want it to be the highest return on investment possible, as in you're reaching the right audience, you're having the highest percentage come through to you. So it's, it is easy to, once you get into this swing of things, to start having this filter when you're looking at potential opportunities, when you're looking at collaborations, when you're looking at where you're going to invest your time and energy, and is this the right place to be investing it? Just because you can, it doesn't mean that you should or that it's useful to do. So, you know, really think about it because your time is finite. That is the one thing you cannot create more of. And when you have a business, you want to be spending as less time as possible on marketing, really. You know, you, you want to have marketing, want it to be working for you, but how much better would it be to spend an hour of your time, create something that lasts and that's still delivering you clients three months later, four months, six months, however long later, rather than spending three hours on something that's going to last one day. You know, we really get mindful as to what type of things you're investing your time into how much value is it going to bring to you? And and the time frame definitely comes into it. How much time you're spending on it, how much time it is going to be giving back to you for the amount of time that you spent on it. So I, this has been quite a deep diving episode today. Now, obviously, there's lots of different things that we can look at and ways that we can connect the 
connect your activities and also the data points to be understanding for them. And all of these are, you know, really easy once you're understanding what they are and what you're looking at and you're able to compare between the activities. The main thing I guess I want you to take away from this episode is just because someone's saying, hey, I'm having success with this activity, it doesn't mean that you're going to have the same result. It doesn't mean that it's the right choice for you as well. So taking on that real responsibility of deciding what are the activities that you're going to do in your business and why you're doing them, being able to answer that question why, how they fit together in the bigger picture means that you're really taking control and responsibility of your marketing system. And that gives you the ability to make informed choices and informed decisions in the future where you might think, well, actually, I'm going to swap one of these out with something else because I think it's going to improve the results. You can test that and see whether it does work or not. So that's it for me today. Thank you for joining. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I'll be back next week with a beautiful guest bringing you another piece of insight, value, experience, and a great story to share as well to help you grow and build your business. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next week. Bye. Isn't it just so frustrating when you know that out there, there are so many people that actually need your help and there's many actively looking for somebody just like you, yet all you seem to attract are the odd tire kicker or really uncommitted client that's kind of dabbling and they don't light you up. They really don't get great results. And you're thinking, what does it actually take to attract clients who are committed, who are happy to pay proper prices for what it is that I do and that I can help to have really great results? What is it going to take? Well, it's not in the activity of what you're doing. Here's the thing. It's usually something else that's a bit deeper. And I'm sharing with you what that is in my training. It's called five keys to premium paying clients. And I'm going to share with you what are these five things that you need to have in your strategy so that no matter what tactic or activity you choose to do, it actually works. (laughs) Like it works. You attract the right clients, the ones who are ready to work with you, the ones who are ready to pay and sign up. So get yourself over to my website now on jessicaosborne.com slash TMF. Register for this free class and let's dive right in. So once again, that's jessicaosborne.com slash TMF. And the link is below in the show notes as well. I encourage you to register now, allocate just over an hour of your time, maybe up to an hour and a half so you can take some notes and really reflect on the things that I share with you in this class. And let's change your year this year. Let's make your business actually turn into your dream business together.